It's going to end up losing it. There we go. Got so many players running forward here. It's kind of crazy. Little chip. Oh, it's beautiful. That's what we're looking for. That's the kind of play we're looking for. It's slick, it's fast, it's unstoppable. Hey ladies and gents, welcome to a brand new eFootball 2023 video. Now I want to talk to you today about how to play like the Barcelona Tikka Taka style. And in version 2.4, the play styles are so important. They've really made some big changes and I was finding huge gaps between my attack and defense and midfield. And it didn't feel very structured and I felt like all the players were really far away from each other and it just wasn't working. So the play styles are the most important part about getting this right. Okay, so I'm playing a 4-2-3-1. Uh, f right fullback, extra front man or attacking fullback are probably the uh, the ones you want in these wide areas. Build up is not ideal really, but it works. So the two centre backs, build up is fine as well. But if you have a destroyer, sometimes they go out and charge the ball down and close the ball down. But the most important part is your midfield, okay, and striker. And I'm going to touch on that now. So your these two midfielders, defense midfielder and central midfielder, have to be orchestrators. Do not have an anchor man. I will cover that off later, later on in this video. Gavi has to be a whole player. Cannot be a creative playmaker. Do not have a creative playmaker. Otherwise, he plays alongside your striker. In the wide areas, we have roaming flank, which is fine and prolific winger. Either of those roles are fine in the wide air. And up front, you want a creative playmaker, whether it's a support striker or a centre forward. So that's the formation, that's the tactics, that's the player styles. I want you to see the difference between a whole player and a creative playmaker from an offensive and defensive point of view. Watch Gavi, who's highlighted here as a whole player, looks for pockets of space to receive the ball. There are times where I send him on a player run, but watch how quickly he drops back in to look for the ball. This is so important for linking a single forward player to the midfield. Now let's take a look at Neymar who is an attacking midfielder with the creative playmaker play style and just look how he stays forward meaning there's no link between my midfield and attack for my team without that whole player. And in this next clip we can see from this counter attack how he's further forward than anyone else in my team. The creative playmaker role behaves similar to that of a goal poacher, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but here we are. And from a defensive point of view, it's very similar to all the other midfielders, to be honest. They hold this straight line across the midfield, and that even applies to anchorman, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, because they used to be deeper than the rest of your line to add that extra layer of protection, but here you're just gonna see a straight line across that midfield for your defensive protection. Now I'm just going to talk you through the pieces of play here using these tactics and play styles that I've just shown you. So what you're going to find is that Kamavinga as a defensive midfield orchestrator, you see him just sort of pick up the ball there, drop off, but he's always deep. He's always going to be offered and available if you ever need to drop back to him. You know, quite often you can see me pass the ball all the way back to him and then I can play it forward to my other or either orchestrator or the whole player. And even if I lose the ball in these advanced positions, I'm able to win it back relatively easily because of the high press with the possession-based play style. Again, playing out from the back, it's very easy to find your players. I found it very easy to cut most of the formations I've come up against so far apart with pretty much very, very easy, to be honest. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult to break down certain formations, but so far, this formation and tactic is a joy to use and has been really effective. Like I said, I'm able to maintain high percentages of possession. I aim or usually find that I'm hitting around 60 to, well, 62% seems to be the optimal number, as you're going to see in these matches, but it's very easy for me to like find pockets of space. And like I said, if they ever get the ball out, it's always coming back at them because I'm able to just uh, keep that high press and high momentum and get these shots in on goal. It's such an effective formation, but these bits of play, little knocking around the corner, if you lose the ball, it doesn't matter. Again, that high press, you just win the ball back very quickly, and in this instance, I scored. But again, we see myself playing out from the back here. Lovely little one-touch stuff. Obviously, like I said, the, the play styles really make this role, and I will show you the best players for this formation and tactic as well later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. But 
you can see that I'm just cutting through players, or this player with ease. And this was not just this player, this is just everyone I came up against online. I also want to touch on some of the other play styles, especially creative playmaker as my forward, which I'm going to touch on in a bit. But you can see here just how much possession and chances I'm creating against my first opponent. 67% possession with 9 shots and 5 on target. Now before I touch on the playstyles, I just want to show you the sort of high press with this formation and tactic. And look how I'm pressing in every area of the pitch. It's very very important that you do apply this sort of high press because you are going to be able to win the ball high up the pitch and that's really going to help you. So just look at this, look it's constant and eventually he gives up the ball and I'm able to run through and score. What you're also going to find with this formation tactics is overloading in the wide areas. Now, if you stick to one area, your players will gravitate to that side. So just look here, how sort of Kamavinga drop, drops across. We've got Modric, of course, straight to roll. So they are literally drifting over to the side. And what this is doing is is creating this like little triangles where he cannot touch the ball. He's, there's, like, if he comes out, I just flick it over the top like I did there. But unfortunately, just got the timing wrong. I find that with this formation tactic, if the or if your opponent doesn't press shoot to clear, you are going to win the ball a lot on the edge of the box. Just watch this for example. I drive into the box, I cross it, but instead of trying to shoot to clear, he just tries to play it out. And that is going to be fatal for so many players that do like to do that. As you can see there, quick turnover and I'm able to score. Just take a look here, once again 62% possession, again pretty dominant. Here I want to touch on the creative playmaker. Just look how he drops off, looks for the ball, spins in behind because I sent him on a player run. That lets him get through and that's what I love about the possession based playstyle. We're going to see that again here. Just watch how he drops off the front, picks up the ball, plays in another player. So he is going to lay and he's going to be so important for linking that midfield and attack together. Again, it was another dominant display, but the only goal really came from this corner, which you're going to see here. And what I do is lay it back to the edge of the box and then more or less just drive through the heart with that little through ball and a cross in and head it in simply into the back of that. But again, you can see the possession stats here, 62% possession, 9 shots, 7 on target. Okay, now I want to do a full match on Legend difficulty with the players I believe really suit this sort of style and tactic. Every player in this squad, apart from Courtois, has one touch passing. And I've gone for the same setup. I've gone slightly different at the, the sort of fullback positions. This time we've got a cross specialist on either side. We've got Mikel on the left hand side, who is actually a creative playmaker, so take that into consideration, along with a prolific winger on the right. Now, through the middle, obviously, we've got a whole player, two orchestrator roles, and then obviously Lionel Messi. I think he is absolutely ideal for this sort of support striker role and you can sort of see how I've leveled him up and why I think is important in that position. If we look at the stats or the, sorry, the substitutes, um, I've gone for Del Piero as a backup for Messi. I've got Lampard, if I want to hit, if I find like a team sitting deep, he's going to act as the whole player, he's going to be able to take long range shots. If I find there's gaps between the midfield and defence, then I've got Verts, and he's also a whole player. So both of those players are whole players. I just think if they're sitting deep and I need to take long range pot shots, then Lampard's going to be my man. If I need that sort of additional control and I feel like I'm getting in between and creating chances, then Verts is going to be a great replacement for Gavi. On the right hand side, Sergio Canales is a backup for Dean Maria and Foden for. Mikel. Again, not really looking for speed on the wings with either of these players. It's mainly about control and controlled possession. That's more important than speed. Verratti and Jorginho are real nice backups for Kamavinga and Modric. So that's my lineup. And like I said, every single player has got one touch passing, even Timber and Alaba. And that's why I've gone for this sort of lineup right now. So th I think these are the perfect players. Let's just take it to the field and see how we get on. And what we're going to try and do is here is just try and maintain good press, but good position from the players. And then Blinn picks it up. Okay, so. And this is why one touch passing is very, very important to me. Able to move the ball very quickly and trust my player's ability to actually pass the ball. Keeping the ball very nicely here. 
And don't be afraid to go backwards. Obviously, you know, if you've ever watched Barcelona in the past, if they ever got a corner kick, they would literally pass it back almost to the halfway line at times. Just to keep possession. It's all about keeping possession. They didn't want to just fling the ball in the box and hope for the best. I did not mean to go to that player there, but that is what it is. He's got a man over here. So this is on legend difficulty. They are sitting nice and deep, unfortunately. So it's going to make it a little bit harder to crack open. But hopefully once we do crack them open. Like here! Oh, what a save! Oh, he's just wandered offside. You can see how many men we've got in, a, in that attacking area. It's one of the issues I do have about this latest update. But this is why, the, like I say, the play styles really do make and break this formation and tactic. If you don't have the right play styles, you will not, this will not work. If you have creative playmakers in the attack with Phil Roll, it will not work. And I will, I will show you an example of that. There we go, got the ball turned over here. We'll flick it out to the wide air, possibly. That's it. Cut back. Oh, and it's a wonderful strike from Nuno Messi. Messi spreading the ball out wide. That chest, I was all over him. And Messi, one touch. Bang, bottom corner. Now hopefully Costa Rica are going to open up. Yeah, they've gone neutral now, so that's good for us. That's going to be really good. It's going to allow far more gaps. Like I said, if they turtled up, and I was like 60 or 70th minute, then I'd probably think about bringing Lampard on. Just give me, like I say, that, that potency from range, with long range shots, and I've leveled up precisely for that reason. It's a nice little bit of super council there. That's nice as well. Kamavinga almost getting in that. Oof. You can see how, how we're dominating them. You know, plenty of players in offensive positions. Good movement all over the pitch. Look at this. That's nice. Oh, just past the far post. But it's so slick. And it's so slick because of the play styles. You know, if you've been watching my sort of live stream, you would have seen the things I was picking up on and the, the changes I was making to the tactics. And that's why we've come to the end result. And it's, it's why it's looking like this. I really do like it. I think it looks amazing to watch, fun to play with. You know, I'm not one of these players who can just hit long spam through balls because that's not, that's not enjoyable for me. I don't want to, I don't play like that. I want to just hit the through ball button from, from range. I want to knock the ball around, have some good possession and play. And really dominate my opponent. That's what I, uh, what I'm really looking for. I apologize about my son if you heard him in the background. <laughs> He's, uh, he's got a brand new bike today. So he's very excited. <laughs> Here's Gabby. Okay, we're in. Oh, look at heck. Messi's been wiped out there big time. No, the yellow card, ref. Oh, maybe he's going to book him. I going to say, he doesn't book him for that. What does he have to do to get a yellow? There he was booked. Thank goodness for that. Not very keen on the uh, the shielding system right now. I think it's just a little bit too sensitive. 
Do you think it needs to be turned down a little bit? This is ball through to Messi! Oh, unlucky. And that's another good thing about this formation tactic. And it's underestimated. You, you would have seen it in the uh, the online games. The press. The press, you know, with this formation and tactic, these play styles, it just seems to work. It just seems to work really nicely. I haven't seen a, a, a press this good since, like, the early versions. Like, one point, well, version 1, 1.1, 1.4, etc. There's Modric. You have options. Obviously, if you run out of options, make sure you go backwards. You know, like I said, don't be afraid to go backwards. Oh, Modric is almost in again. And you can see it's just wave after wave of attacks, complete domination of the ball. Have they even been in my half? I don't know if they have. 63% possession. Again, that's 60% possession. I think they've got a creative playmaker in here. No, just the classic number ten. We'll see. We'll see what the classic number ten looks like. But um, I wouldn't mind bringing on Lampard just to have a few cracks from range. They're not a bad option. Having that. I mean, it's just it's just relentless, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it is relentless. The passing is not difficult. I'm using level 2 passing. It's my preferred method. Oh, Modric was going to have a crack. I feel like there's a second goal on the cards here. It's just a matter of time. Just getting that final ball just right. Not gonna pass it, is he? No. Oh, he's got a chance here to open me up. This is the first time I've sort of been under threat here. Thrown to Costa Rica. Obviously not the best team, but trust me, it doesn't matter who you play. Some of these weaker teams are actually more difficult to play against because of their defensive nature. Because they're stronger in terms of physicality. It's a real, real issue I faced against Qatar and uh, on the online play, if you uh, were watching the stream. You think, oh yeah, it's just Qatar. That's a nice ball! Oh, Camavinga. Gavi losing out there, but that's a loose pass. Here's Gavi. A ball around the corner to Messi. Messi onto Modric, but I oh, just can't quite find. Oh, he's in. Oh, that's a really stupid pass. Okay. Blend to tidy up. Okay, Gavi's race is run. He's getting pretty tired. I think that's why we're seeing a change in the flow of the game. Why Costa Rica are sort of coming back into it. Tired legs. Messi got man over. Oh, Mikel was on his way. That's a nice little flick into Blind. Gonna play it back to Modric. It's not on Messi. Oh, Di Maria couldn't quite get away from his man. I mean, how many one-touch bits of play have we seen? Little combinations, pretty much all over the pitch on pretty much all attacks. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Like that Barcelona tick attacker style.
Tamavinga. Blend. It's a, it's a real difficult wall to break down. I'll try and reverse it back. Not quite the pass I was looking for. Timber picks it up. I was trying to create a foul there just to get some fresh players on. There we go. <laughs> that should have been a foul. I went to wipe him out. sort of see the difference from Del Piero. You'll see him probably drop off a lot deeper. And then we'll set. Okay. The ball out to Sergio Canales. Lampard on for a few minutes and already getting the second goal again from that high press. Like I say, a lot of goals come from the high press. All this nice ticker tack of plate, and it's, uh, it's just that high press that's done them. Nice little flick. Here's Lampard. He's not the typical player that I would normally bring in because he hasn't got the greatest of ball control or tight possession stats. But like I said, he's, he's merely there to uh, to take shots from range. Not well worked at all. And there it is. Okay, so a comfortable 2 0 victory over Costa Rica. And that is why I think these formation and tactics absolutely are pretty much nailed on for the Barcelona tick attacker. Like I said, you have to have those play styles right. You don't get the play styles right, then it's not going to work. Anyway, that's all for me, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.